Hey everybody, this is Stacy Pace, one of the nurse practitioners with Spectrum, the other clinic. I'm going to be talking about a little problem with the types of estrogen that are commonly encountered by folks who are feminizing. Uh, that is, those who are heading toward the feminine end of the spectrum, be that kind of non-binary, non-binary feminine leaning, uh, all the way femme, whatever may have you. Uh, Everyone seems to uh, have this question on their mind sometimes, or you might have been told recently by myself or someone else about uh, the problems you can have with the different types of estrogens. Uh, first though, I will say a little disclaimer is that this is not geared toward uh, medical people. This is more geared toward folks who don't deal with this on a daily basis. So the language I will use will be very simple so that hopefully everybody can kind of get on board and follow along with me. Uh, because not everybody wants to nerd out in endocrinology and everything, although I do. Um, anyways, so uh, the problem, let's get down to it. So um, whenever you're measuring your labs and everything, one of the things that should be being measured is your estrogen. That is, you know, your estradiol, your total estrogens, your estrone, uh, your estriol, you know, not all of those have to be measured all the time or anything, but those are just examples for you so that you know uh, what we're talking about here. So there are two main estrogens though that we focus on, uh, and that would be estradiol, which is your more powerhouse estrogen. That's gonna be like the one that really gets in there and kicks butt for uh, transitional changes. And then there's estrone, a weaker estrogen uh, that can become kind of problematic. It does have its uses, but it can become problematic in a large amount of people. Um, so, getting down to it, at least in my clinic, uh, I'm usually aiming to get folks uh, estradiol levels at bare minimum at 200 um, for transitional purposes. And I mean, we can go upwards of 300, 400, 500. It really depends on the individual and what results they're getting and what they're looking for and everything. So anyways, um, that would be estradiol. Now in regards to estrone, um, you really are looking more for a ratio rather than a number, a specific number with estrone. You're looking more for a, uh, an, a ratio of not more than uh, three to one estrone to estradiol. And, um, you know, it's not necessarily a horrible thing if you have that. Um, it can certainly go higher and you can certainly transition with a, a, a ratio like that but it can become problematic for reasons that I will state in a little while. Um, you know, whenever I talk about the, the uh, ratio, I do want you to know, like, if you have a three to one, that's not like horrible. I mean, I've seen people with like 15 to one ratios and you know, that's getting a little bit into the crazy pants uh, ratio. But, um, but anyway, in general for my clinic, whenever I'm watching ratios, if I start seeing it, go to where you have an estrone to estradiol ratio of higher than five to one, that's usually when I'm gonna stop you and say, okay, we need to talk. Uh, and what we're gonna talk about is this. So estradiol, like I said, is the powerhouse estrogen and it's the one that we really want to have the higher levels of so that we can you know, get some good transitional effects and everything. Um, estrone kind of gets in there and can trip you up a little bit if the level gets too high in regards to uh, or when balanced against the estradiol. Um, so let's say if you had, I don't know, an estradiol level of 200 and an estrone level of 600, and that's where you, you know, that's that three to one ratio. And if you start going higher than that, this is when you'll have this problem. So estrone, even though it's a weaker estrogen, has a higher affinity for those receptors in your body that are for estrogens. And so you have these estrogen receptors floating around in your body, whatever. And uh, you have your different estrogens such as estradiol and uh, estrone and whatnot. And they hook up with these estrogen receptors. Now, the sad thing about estrone is that you're gonna find that it has a higher affinity for the receptors. Even though it's a weaker uh, estrogen in its effects, it has a higher affinity for the receptors. What that means is that it comes along near the receptor and it goes boop and it goes right into it and it hangs on for dear life. Estradiol has a moderate um, affinity for these estrogen receptors and so it comes along it's like all right boop and it's there and it does its job. But if you have a whole bunch of estrone floating around then you might have clogged up all your estrogen receptors with this estrone. That can become a problem as I mentioned before because remember estrone is a bit weaker about Shoot, it's only about four to eight percent as strong as estradiol. So you're only getting four to eight percent 
of that, that uh, estrogen strength whenever you have estrone clogging up all your receptors. Now, you know, normally you would have estradiol attaching to receptors and estrone attaching to some and whatever, and it mixes up very well. But sometimes the estrone levels get a little bit out of proportion to estradiol and they start crowding things out. And then that's when transitional issues can occur. Um, I will commonly see people have this issue and it's like they transition somewhat, usually through the first year, year and a half of their therapy. You know, things are going pretty all right for their transition. And then all of a sudden it's just like they stall. And for several months, nothing's happening and they wonder what it is and everything. Um, and you know, come to find out they have this estrone problem. Um, now, there are many things you can do to correct an estrone problem, but they are almost all going to involve getting off of pills. And that is uh, a big deal for some people because a lot of people you know, want to be on pills because they're easier for one. Um, you know, everybody's used to pills. Nobody wants to talk about like patches and injections and stuff. But, um, but pills are the culprit here. Um, you don't get the same problem whenever you have patches or injectables because those are being absorbed directly through the skin um, or being injected directly into the body. Uh, whereas pills, you're having to actually put them in your mouth and they get uh, processed a little bit through the liver. Um, if you're doing it right, you're dissolving them under your tongue or between your cheek and gum so that you can get about 30% more of that estradiol absorbed from the pill before it goes to the liver. Uh, otherwise, if you are swallowing a pill, just putting it in your mouth, swallowing it, probably about 90% of that pill that you just swallowed gets eliminated by the liver. Um, so definitely dissolve under the tongue or between the cheek and gum um, down till it becomes kind of a little powdery powder and then uh, you swallow what's left. Uh, anyway, like I said, that's just a little tip. It'll boost your absorption of the medication by about 30%, um, give or take 5% here and there, depending on the person. Um, but anyway, so pills are the problem there. Um, a lot of times what I'll advise people to do then is to change up their regimen to either patches or injectables or, or what have you. Um, but anyways, so this is a problem that is very commonly encountered. Um, the person that I look up to most for uh, hormone guidance and everything would be Dr. William Powers. Uh, who is working out of Michigan and he's the first person that I came across who was uh, putting forth this idea uh, and I latched onto it and did you know some research on my own really glad he had put out his lecture video about that I mean it's been groundbreaking honestly uh, what can be done when you know that this problem happens I know in the video he said uh, I think he estimated that somewhere around like 30 or 40 percent of individuals have this estrone imbalance uh, honestly in my own practice, it's seeming uh, closer to 50, maybe even pushing 60%. I don't know if that has something to do with the uh, genetics down here in the South or something or what, but um, an awful lot of my uh, ladies have this problem and, uh, and it is a pain in the butt, you know? I'll have people come to my clinic who have been on these pills for years from other providers and uh, they come in and uh, I'm just like, well, okay, you know, looks like you got some breast development or whatever, you know, how long have you been on therapy? And they're like, oh, well, about five years, which then surprises me because I'm like, wow, I really would have thought you'd be a little bit further along, but come to find out, you check their labs and they have this estrone problem. Um, and then when that gets corrected, they resume transitioning. Very nice. Um, anyways, so this was just kind of uh, to throw out there. I know a lot of people have kind of had this question on their mind and wanted me to make a little video so people could watch. And like I said, it's not, you know, super in-depth or anything, but it can help explain um, why you might need to change up your medication regimen or, um, or just at least have that conversation with your provider. Um, another interesting factoid about estrone and having it be an elevated level is that it's thought to be the estrogen that is uh, more responsible for uh, blood clots and things. So whenever you start seeing your estrone level and that ratio rise, that could mean that you're potentially at more risk for blood clots at that point too. So that's another um, point in favor of, uh, of checking these labs and making sure that you know what your estrone level is. Um, I will say that 
at least in my region, it doesn't seem to very to be very commonly checked. Um, most places either are checking only a total testosterone, or, good lord, total estrogen level. Um, maybe I need some coffee. Anyways, um, so either they're checking a total estrogen level or they're just checking an estradiol level and they leave estrone out altogether. Um, I will say an interesting way to get your estrone level, um, if for some reason the lab you're going to just won't check estrone, is you can get a total uh, estrogen level and a estradiol level. And all you do is you subtract the estradiol from the total estrogen, and that's pretty much your estrone. So if you have an estradiol of 100, a total estrogen of 200, you minus the estradiol, and there you've got 100 left over, that's your estrone level. Ta-da! Um, it's just a nice little trick for those who are working with labs that don't have as many choices or, um, or who are trying to save a couple bucks here and there because sometimes one lab could be cheaper than the other depending on how you get your labs and whatnot. Um, anyways, so I hope that y'all found this educational and, um, <laughs> and I'm going to go get some coffee now. Thanks. Bye.